Proudly sponsored by stms.studio for all your merch and printing needs. Proud patron of Ian's Chain Charity, helping to save lives together. Love local, love music, Moreland's Radio. I've got some amazing guests to talk to today. Now, my first guest runs a music-based podcast called Twisted, Torn and Moist. It's amongst one of the top listened-to music podcasts in the world. And that's quite a claim, but it's true. Her name is Joanne Embry, and she joins us in the studio this morning. Good morning, Joanne. Hello, good morning. Thanks for having me. So firstly, tell us a little bit about you. So me, uh, I've been involved with music for many years now, probably about... 14, um, actually involved in organising festivals and, um, you know, supporting the music scene as a whole. But but my journey, um, from a very young age, I was involved in music. I was off to all the local venues in Stoke-on-Trent. You know, we had a lot more back then. Um, And unfortunately, as the years have gone, they've closed down and I've toured with various local bands. And for me, that's where my passion really started. I thought, you know what? I love music. It's everyone's escape. You can kind of zone out when you listen to it. You can work out really hard to it. A lot of people have got journeys, and I think that's the main take from music. Everyone listens to a song and gets their own kind of adventure through it. And um, so I've uh, helped organise a festival called Rock Witch with the rest of the team. I've been doing that for, for years now. I think this is the 10th year. Um obviously take COVID away, probably, let's just say the 10th. Um, and I've met so many bands over the years and I've, I've made such, um, you know, a contact list of them bands. And it's really nice to be able to have to put this podcast together because I can recall the people that I started out my journey with and say, look, do you want to be involved? And, and that's the main thing, really. At the start, I had nothing to show. So I can understand where local musicians and, you know, up and coming bands kind of where they are with it. No one wants to hear from you. Well, on the odd a few occasions they do. But I was contacting so many people saying, oh, you know, I've set up a podcast, do you want to come on? They didn't know what it was. I didn't have any stats to say, look, this is this is where it is in the world. You know, it's been in the charts. So the bands that stayed with me from the start, the smaller bands, you know, the ones with maybe 100 likes on their Facebook account, they're the ones now that are actually going through and, and it's really nice to be able to see them on the festival bills and I'm like, I interviewed them when they were tiny, <laughs> tiny. And, and you know, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that missed that opportunity and that's why I created the pod that I did because I wanted to help these smaller bands get discovered and give them a platform where, you know, if you've got ill health, perhaps you don't want to go out. COVID caused a lot of problems for, um, for the music scene, as we know, and a lot of other problems for everything else. But I wanted to kind of say... Right, if you're ill, you don't want to go out. I hate parking. So for me, when I pick a venue, it's got to have parking because otherwise I stress. I'm there on Google Maps. I'm stressing. I'm doing the the street view, trying to find parking. Um, So to bring that to people that perhaps can't get out there, it's really nice. They They shouldn't miss out. And that's the whole reason why I set this up, to discover new bands and to include people that perhaps can't get out to, to gigs. How would you describe the genres of music that you cover in the podcast? Oh, everything, really. I don't mind. Um, I do a lot of rock because that's obviously the festival. I got that impression, yeah. yeah. A lot of rock because um, that's the festival that obviously we, um, that I help to organise. And... Um, I, I do a lot of metal metal music as well because I used to run a rock uh, metal festival called Lostock uh, up in Lostock Graylam, hence the name. I mean, it's dead, you know Lostock Lostock Graylam. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was a free festival, and people I think are put off by metal. So to bring metal and rock together is really nice because it's not so scary when it's out there. It's you know it's just a different variation in music. There's so many genres. I don't. The reason I've done metal and rock is just because they're the contacts I've got. I'm happy to have any person that's involved in music on my podcast. That's where I'm looking at going with it. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're in a band, it doesn't matter if you're an artist, it doesn't matter what music you do, hit me up, I'll get you on. 
Because the people that you talk to are predominantly musicians, but it's not always about the music, is it? And um, I'm thinking about some of your recent ones. So, uh, Sammy Armento, mm-hmm. um, you were talking about um, getting into the business and her, her time as uh, being a promoter. Um, and you also talked about mental health. I'm thinking about the one with Chris Nichols mm. um, that you did, for, again, fairly recently, yeah. which was really a lot about mental health, wasn't it? And I know that's yeah. something you'd like to cover. Absolutely. I think from, you know, mental health has always been there and there's been a stigma behind it and so many people try and banish that stigma but it's just it's still out there and people still look at someone with mental health problems and they view them differently to other people in society and everyone should be viewed the same really um and as as an individual and for me i like being able you know now that i've got a reach a fair reach of people and i've got different countries i like getting out there and just especially if it's from musicians and if it's from people in the music industry and scene then perhaps they can relate to it, um, but it's very nice to share those those struggles that they've been through because they've come out the other end, and sadly, some people don't. And if, if, if anyone listens to my podcast can kind of take from that and say, look, I've struggled, but your podcast really helped me. And, and I have had messages like that, and it's really nice. I'm also a patron of a suicide awareness charity uh, called Ian's Chain, and that's where my podcast started at their festival called Savfest back in August 2022. And... It's really nice that through my voice, we can kind of banish that stigma. Andy's Man Club with Chris Nichols, he's wrote a song called Blessed, and that's to raise money and awareness of the you know suicide awareness and mental health and i think there's there's men out there that get forgotten about you know there's the whole stigma oh you're a man you can't you've got to be okay no that's not true if anyone's struggling everyone has has the right to struggle um, but seek help Come and, you know, share your experiences with me. I'm happy. I've interviewed Lou Macari over the homeless, um, homelessness and all the work that he's done in Stoke-on-Trent. And that's really nice because not everyone reads the paper. Not everyone's got access to magazines and things. And sometimes people just like having that reassurance in their ear. And that's what I give them. It's like a gentle cuddle, you know, through your ears, if you like. Because it's a bit more than a podcast, isn't it? From from what I've seen, it's a community that you're growing Yeah. In. Uh, And you see it on the Facebook page as well. Um, I I want to ask you about, um, you know, because I I see you've not been doing it that long, really, and it's it's grown massively. Um, You've seen each episode grow. Um, How did you feel when you started to see... Because I I remember putting something on um, SoundCloud about four or five years ago and thinking, well, nobody ever listened listened to that. Um, And then within the first day, it had like 100 listens. I think, that's 100 people Mm. have clicked on it. How did that feel when you first started to see people sort of reacting to what you did? doing and and, and listening to it well i mean at first i set it up obviously i didn't have a clue what i was doing i kind of did a bit of research put a post on facebook asked people you know in the music industry what do you use to record interviews with so of course i go to amazon have a look at amazon prime get the next day delivery look at festivals go up to the festival and when i released my first episodes i didn't expect much from it because i had no organic you know it was it was just brand new and I kept refreshing, kept refreshing. And I think you can get into that kind of refresh. And when you see no one's listened... Become think, obsessed yeah, almost. Yeah, a little obsessed. And you think, yeah. oh, no one's listened. And I remember feeling a bit disheartened. And, and that must be how bands feel, you know, when they put an, a, like, a track out there and they feel that no one's listened to it. And then all of a sudden, it was charting. And I, I said to my partner at the time, I said, I said what... What, what's, what's going happened? on? Yeah. yeah, like is this a dream? And then, of course, it was in it was in the USA charts. It then went into the UK charts, and then it was getting the Apple Music charts. And I thought, you know what? Actually, because at first I was having a laugh and a joke with with bands and stuff, and then you, you sort of get a bit more refined. You know, I, I do quizzes with bands. I'm trying to find the cleverest band. But from then, it's it's like you said, it has become something more serious. And it's it's making my dream come true because I just want to be able to share music and discover the bands that perhaps wouldn't have access to this. Um, and to be in 41 countries now is pretty crazy. I mean, every other week I kind of look at the charts and I think, oh, where am I now? And it can fluctuate as it always does. Things come in. And then I think the highlight for me was being just underneath Katie Melua's podcast. And I was like, wow, you know, yeah. I used to listen to her. These are all real people. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't really hit home. And to be honest, I'm just glad that I can give bands that chance. And it's quite funny now because some of the bigger bands that turned me away at first are saying, you know, can we book in? Well, I've got a lot of other bands, you know, smaller bands on my list. And when that, 
reduces, I'll get you in, you know? <laughs> uh, what I want to ask you about is about, because I'm, I'm fascinated by the, um, the techniques of interviewing. Mm. Um, and it's been a big learning curve for me doing this job, I guess. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed about your podcast is you're not starstruck when you get some of the bigger names in. And, and certainly some of the names that you've interviewed, I've heard of. Mm. Um, and, I, and that surprised me. Um, but you sort of invite them into your world to have a play. Yeah. Um, is, is that what you set out to do? Yeah, I have no script. So um, it's all band led. And people like talking about themselves and people don't like listening a lot of the time. But actually, I just say, right, this is about you. You tell me all the things that you've not been allowed to say in an interview, you know, within reason. You tell me things that I want to know about their personal life. I want to know all the things that hasn't been covered. There's a lot of areas in musicians' lives that people don't want to know about, you know, when they're having an interview. I do. That's that's the missing link, I feel. It's a missing bit of the puzzle. And, uh, yeah, it is literally come into my world and we'll see where we go. I mean, I can't be held responsible for some of the stuff we talk about. It's just, it's random. You know, their dog will appear and I'll be like, hello, bye at it a few times, you know, see if they react. But, yeah, it is literally come into my world and let's see where we go from that. And it's all led by bands. So whatever they want to talk about, they can talk about. So, yeah, it's, it's really nice. And I get lost in it. That's my way. You know, I've got such a busy life outside of doing that. It's my way of relaxing, chatting to people, getting to know stuff. Because I walk away going, I didn't even know that. <laughs> The one quote that still stays with me um, involves a milkshake in a McDonald's and the toilets. Yeah. Um, but yeah. let's leave that there. I'll leave that for the listeners to go and discover that particular episode. Yeah, in, yeah. <laughs> I think holiday. that's on Regional One. If you want to, if you want to listen to that episode, there's quite a lot of hacks on there. <laughs> Regional One. They also taught me that there's lawnmower racing, which I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. We spoke about that as well in that episode. It's quite a good one. <laughs> Just like someone, do you know, that's the thing. Every episode's got something different about it. Yeah. And you don't know where it's going to go no. at the start, do you? And my earlier yeah. podcasts, like when I started out, like I said, I had to become a bit more professional and a bit more refined in it. You know, I was like, what's a jingle? What's a podcast jingle? So I went down to Birmingham and uh, one of my friends brought this musician to interview. I was... And he just turned up and I said, oh, hello, what band are you in? And he actually did the guitar in my jingle and I made oh, the rest on Garage Band. Wow. It was all a DIY thing, you know, I hadn't got a clue. <laughs> Brilliant. What have been the highlights then? Um, are there any guests that have sort of stood out for you over the last year or so? Uh, highlights? I mean, every every interview that I do, hand on heart, you know, there's always highlights from every episode. I mean, Sammy, me and her have been good friends for 12 odd years and I've never really got round to chatting to her properly about the music industry because life goes on and you just kind of exist alongside each other. You know, like me and you have on our Facebook. We've been friends for, for ages. Um, I didn't realise that till last night. No, I Weird. know. It's crazy, isn't it? It's a good job, really. Yes. Um, but it's all about networking and creating opportunities. So for Sammy, we, we it's just literally like having a laugh with your mate. We can sit round, we've got a cup of tea and just talk about random nonsense that other people haven't got time for you know perhaps your partner don't want to listen to it so i'll come on my podcast and speak to the other bands about it yeah. it's, it's just yeah i think a highlight for me was meeting um aaron Eady out of paradise lost um i was at a festival uprising in leicester and um i interviewed him and i was doing the quiz with him and i tried to end the end the interview and he kept saying, no, no, quiz me more, quiz me more. Okay. And at that point, I thought, you know what, this is ace because it's not a chore. It's not a chore for the bands. And a lot of the feedback that I get from them is it's a nice way to end their night after a gig. You know, it's really chill and it's just something, they all go away with a smile on the face. And if they don't, I make sure they do. I'll draw it on or paint it on or something. <laughs> Have you had any difficult guests? Yeah, I think yeah. anyone you talk to, you've just got to hope that they give you a little bit because... When you inter introduce yourself and you say, right, it's about you, it takes a while to get some people going. And you know yourself, you can run out of steam. And even me, my mates will tell you, I'm dead chatty. Uh, I hadn't he, noticed yeah, that. Yeah, but no. even I get fed up with my own voice at times. <laughs> I will not listen back to my podcast a lot of the time. Okay. I, I won't do it. I just don't like the sound of my own voice. Uh, so sorry, everybody. I apologise <laughs> for my voice. Um, but, yeah, I, I think there's times where you're chatting and they don't give much and you're running out and you think I'm going to have to end this interview on 15 yeah. minutes in a minute because you're not giving me much and then all of a sudden you'll capitalise on something that they really enjoy talking about and you're like right that's I've hit the jackpot here and you've opened open the floodgates and out it comes they just chat to you and you see their eyes light up yeah and, and then you think I'm running out of time now <laughs> And, and that's the main thing. I try and turn every interview that I have into um, a positive spin. So 
if it starts off a little bit ropey, I kind of, I can steer it if I want, or I can kind of listen to them and let them steer it. And that's the beauty of hosting. You can, you can not cut them off, but you can guide them in a direction if you want to. But I just allow them to be themselves. Um, and what you see, what you hear is organic reach, really. And that's the main thing. It's all raw. So this has been a, um, I'll say, one man band. Um, yeah, it has. You 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 do the recording, you do the editing, do it, well, don't you do edit, all the promotion. Really. Don't okay. edit. Nothing's edited. But you do it all yourself. Mm. Is, is what I'm saying. Is is there a um, is there a next level to this? Is 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 this something you're going to develop further and maybe do do maybe yeah. become a job eventually? I really would like to. Um, I'm, I'm lucky uh, in my day job that I'm allowed. I'm able to do this as a hobby. Um, but for the sake of every band out there, I feel that what I've got is something special. Um, I mean, the, the charts tell me that I didn't, I don't know. I didn't realize that myself. I just thought I was just doing something I like, but to get other people on board, even if it's just one listener to have thousands of listeners, you know, hundreds a week, really, that's what's coming in now. Um, so in the next year, I would like to take it further. It's been going a year and six months. I give myself two years to try and make something of it. Otherwise, I said, right, you know, I'll withdraw a bit and just maybe lessen the interviews. Um, but yeah, if there's anyone out there that would like to, you know, jump on board with me and perhaps give me that next level, it's like bands, I'd say, um, when they've done so well themselves you have to take that next step i'm a bit lost as to where i go because like i said i've done it all myself so if there's anyone out there that can guide me let me know um, but i would like to make something of this year i would like to to do this full time where I, I interview at festivals um which is pretty special i love my festival interviews but out of season it's a bit difficult yeah. which is why the majority of my interviews are done on zoom because it brightens up your dark day doesn't it absolutely and i guess um a major sponsor wouldn't uh, wouldn't be uh, a, a problem <laughs> no i mean i would i would like a major sponsor i've got a couple of sponsors you know i've got merchandise company stms uh, studios i've got ian's chain charity which is really nice just having that logo on the podcast it's a visible presence and it just hopefully people will go oh what's that that's the whole idea of the name they, they go oh what's that you know intrigued um but if there is a big sponsor out there yeah I, I would be open to that and working with you because it's hard work on your own when you've i, I feel like i'm treading in quicksand i just want to get further up but i don't really know how to do it at the minute yeah. so i'm just treading water if you like yeah um but yeah it's definitely on the horizon i think there is a scope for it i've got all my statistics behind me um to back back up what i say and i think that's the main thing isn't it and I've heard from our sports so I talked to our sports team here and said you were coming on and they tell me you're a massive League Town fan um, you must be really happy at the moment following League Town honestly yeah I've, I've followed League Town for years not as long as some of the, the people I um, knock about with at the stadium um, I've got to mention the Grey Street on tour though we've got like a little group together uh, Grey Street on tour we sponsor one of the players Tom Carr which is amazing because he's my nephew's favourite player and every okay. time we see him he says Tom Carr Tom Carr <laughs> shoveling a bag of crisps in his mouth. He's the only player that got him to stop doing that. Um, but yeah, we, we follow him all over the place, and um, it's great that Morelands cover the, the obviously the matches because there's some that I can't get to, and a lot of the people that we go with, you know, things come up, work comes up, and it's nice to be able to listen when you're not there. And yeah, uh, yeah I am very happy, and I'm not saying anything. I've been told not to say anything, not to jinx things, but we are at the top of the league. Come on, League Town, come on. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and finally, what um, what advice would you give to anybody listening to this that has maybe been thinking about starting their own podcast but hasn't maybe taken the steps to do it? Um, what I would say is just do it. If you really want to do it, just do it. It is a saturated market, but if you if if you cover something that you're passionate about, then I think that you've got everything that you need to, to start one up um you don't need the expensive stuff i bought all this these microphones i, I didn't use them um just buy buy the stuff and look at your target market and stick with it don't veer off um i mean it, you do struggle because it's finding contacts that's the biggest one that you struggle with it's getting your foot through the door if you like it's like Takeshi's Castle you knock on all these doors some open and some you don't you just run into and bounce off so I just run around the back and try and get through the window <laughs> that's how I view it but what I would say anyone coming into the industry have a listen to um, one of my newest interviews with Sammy Armento part two she's been a promoter for years and she just talks through what it's like in the music industry you know it's not all it's not all sunshines and rainbows there's a lot of dark days too and there's a lot of knockbacks so you've just got to have a thick 
thick skin and you've just got to get on with it um, and stick to it. But have a reasonable time limit in your head that if it's not doing anything, then maybe it's time to reassess and maybe move on to something different. Try something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, finally, tell us where can we find your podcast if we want to listen to it? Okay, so the podcast itself is on um, Spotify. If you type in Twisted, Torn and Moist, um, if you type in on Google, it comes up. It's the up. top one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the top yeah. one. Um, it's on there and I'm quite approachable. I'm on Facebook too, um, although I've got quite a lot of messages in my inbox. I'm dead sorry for anyone. I probably need a secretary. I've just got a PR manager now. Her name's Tammy. She's ace. She goes through it all and uh, digs them out. So any bands that have applied, I will get you on. Don't worry. I've got my waiting list. Brilliant. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. And the name for anyone that wants to know. That was what I was going to ask you. Yeah. About. yeah well, I asked you outside in reception. Mm. Um, but yeah, go on. Where did the name so come the from? the name, Twisted, Torn and Moist. Well, I spend a lot of time at venues, a lot of time at festivals. And so Twisted Minds, Torn Tents, and it was going to be Sticky Floors, but unfortunately, I didn't think Twisted, Torn and Sticky had the same ring to it as Twisted, Torn and Moist. So wow, okay. together, we're going to banish the stigma behind the word moist because it's the word, most hated word in the in the world. <laughs> yeah. By, you know, creating my podcast that's now 494 in the world. Can't be that hated if they're listening to it. <laughs> and uh, obviously banish the stigma behind mental health and discover these new bands. Fantastic. Joanne, thank you so much for coming in and hopefully we'll speak again. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me, Tony. Really appreciate it. The Morlands Mid-Morning Show. Proud to be local. The Tony Mullins Show.